How you doing guys? Today we are working on the 1955 Wheel Horse Senior. Specifically, by the end of the video, I'm hoping to have the whole rear end uh, back together. But before I can do that, I do have to clean, uh, squeaky clean the two side plates. Uh, one's up there on the workbench, the other one here is on the floor. This one here should be just a straight cleaning. Um, there's really not a whole, there's really nothing to do on this one. On this particular side plate, uh, we do have a broken off drain plug. So uh, over the last couple days, I have been heating it up with my torch and then quenching it with some WD-40 and then letting WD-40 sit in there. Um, not necessarily gonna hope, I mean, my, my hope is that it will migrate in there, but ultimately what we're gonna need to do or what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna drill that thing out and then I'm gonna use this big easy out from the other side, obviously, uh, to, to slowly work it out. And if I have to heat it up and uh, quench it a bunch of times in order to get it out, I'm hoping I can just get it out of the side plate and ultimately save the threads. All right, so let me go ahead and drill this out. So I went ahead and drilled the uh, plug to quarter inch so that way I could get the easy out into it. I'm going to heat this up with the torch first. Um, see if we can get this a little bit, not red hot or anything like that, but definitely get some heat into it. Uh, hopefully this will steel will expand a little bit, loosen it up. You know, we'll, we'll see what happens, but that's the theory behind it all. open sesame and just like that that broken off jammed in drain plug is out now i'm going to go ahead and let this just cool naturally i'm not going to i'm not going to like try to quench it or anything like that but what i am going to do is let, as this is cooling i'm going to go ahead and get the other side cover uh, i'm going to spray it all down with uh, degreaser and uh, and cleaner so i can get the bulk of the nonsense off it and then ultimately, I'll run it through the parts washer, clean the bearings all, clean the bearing all up, and in theory, we can put the uh, rear differential back together. I guess we can add this to the pile of senior parts. There's the uh, first side plate all cleaned up and ready to go. I went ahead and sprayed it all down with Simple Green, uh, brushed it off, and then hosed it all off put it in the parts washer and got the rest of the you know grease and crap off it hit the surface with a cookie wheel so that's all clean the bearing looks good the bearing oh the, I mean the race uh, the bearing on the other side is fine I also cleaned the inside where the gear case would be so this particular one just needs a little fine cleaning in, in some of the bolt holes but overall it's ready to go. This one here, I have to do all the, I've already washed it with Simple Green and some water, give it a good wash job. I'm gonna go ahead, cookie wheel the inside of this area as well as where the gasket will be. I'll clean the bearing uh, and then I'll run it through the parts washer also. Well, that's over, thank God. Uh, <laughs> cleaned all the bolts, chased all the threads, um, you know, left all the heads. They're clean, but like patina, so that way when it gets all put back together, they'll all blend in with the rest of the patina paint or patina rust, however you want to 
look at it, uh, these six bolts are the six bolts that bolt the torque tube to the rear end. And in the little, you know, working clip that just happened, I was taking a drill bit and cleaning these things out cleaning out the little holes that uh, go through the heads. Because obviously on the original Ford, these were laced. Um, I've never seen a senior uh, with those bolts laced. So I, I pr I'm probably not gonna lace the bolts, uh, but uh, I did I did wanna clean it out to make it, make them, make them look good. So that's, that's exactly what I did. I cleaned all the holes. So these are all set and ready to go. Uh, next up, let's start putting some stuff together with everything cleaned up we are ready to start reassembling the rear um, I have it situated in this in this fashion because this is how it's going to go together this technically is the passenger side because if we were turning around and that would be the passenger side of the of the rear and that's the driver's side um, I'm going to go ahead and put the what I would call the passenger side of the rear onto the housing first and the reason for that is because the pinion is unshrouded on this side the differential has to go in this direction this side has the shroud and oh who made the comment in the last video indicating that this is probably a later rear end um thank you uh, i'm not a ford guy so if this is a later than a, a later style banjo rear um i'm all ears uh if anybody else can explain what this might have come out of I'll let you know uh, let me know please one thing I will say real quick and then we'll jump right back onto this is that I know this must be from a later car one the information that was provided to me just in the last video about this rear as well as when we take a look at the transmission it has dual uh, detents on both sides I guess this is a later version transmission with the dual detents i guess the earlier ones only had one detent um that's what i was told and then if we look at the number it says like 18-17 rt7t and then the numbers are real faint it finishes off with a i think a 127 and then there's a star whoops then there's a star right there if anybody knows what that means uh let me know because I'd be interested to know what this actually came out of. Um, now, back to our scheduled programming. So that's what we're gonna do. I'm gonna go ahead and bolt that on first and then drop the, the rear or the differential in. From what I've learned, uh, from what I learned online, reading some articles, there's a series of gaskets that have to go on either side of the case. And that sets the preload on the roller bearings where the, where the big races are. Now, there were a couple gaskets in this, uh, between these two things, but when you turn the pinion, it would go donk, 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 donk. Like there's a lot of play, way more play between the pinion and the ring gear than what was supposed to be there. Um, and then because this is not gonna be spun at high speeds, I think, I think what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna permatex it and not put the gaskets in it to be honest with you, because I don't want it to weep. And the amount of knocking around that this gear set had, I think I could probably make it a little bit tighter with just the Permatex. Um, remember, this is a tractor, low speed. You know, we're not, we're not putting a built flathead in front of this thing. So it should be more than sufficient. Um, also going back to one of my other videos about the the 103 being stamped into the uh, differential. As you can see, the center section and this outer section, which would be the passenger side of the differential, they're marked as 103 and then there's a indicator line. Um, clearly, I realigned everything when I put the bolts back in. It also has a 103 stamped right here in the axle as well as another 103 stamped into this axle. And somebody at, at one point hand painted 103 on the gear. So if anybody knows what that means, again, please educate me in the comments section because I have no idea what that means. I'm not, a, I'm not a Ford guy. I was a Buick guy at one time. Um, so educate me, uh, let me know uh, what that might mean. 
So with that being said, what we're going to do is we're going to get this side cover up on the workbench. We're going to go ahead and put the get some Permatex on there, bolt that uh, section together. Ultimately, we'll drop the rear end and then we'll re-bolt or reinstall the driver's side. For my peace of mind, I decided to just put the whole differential together um, dry, meaning it's not lubed up or anything like that. I got to clean. I, I want to blow it off, make sure it's squeaky clean, no dust or little helicopters that are flying around in it. But I also wanted to see what was the tension on those uh, differential uh, bearings as well as the pinion. Now, to do that, I went ahead and put it together dry. I just put a few bolts into each side cover and made sure that they were tight. Not a thousand foot pounds, but firmly in place all the way around. Uh, there's no gap between anything. And let's see where it is. And I'll be honest with you, it's tight. It's not tight, tight, but you can hear a little bit of. A little bit of play in the in the gears but it doesn't want to it doesn't want to free play at all I have to actually kind of twist it so I think with a little bit of RTV on either side um, just a thin 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 layer um, and then tighten all the bolts down there's gonna be sufficient play where you're not gonna get premature wear number one it's got to get all lubed up number two um, and this is going back in a tractor, so we're not talking this thing. This thing is not going to be spinning at high speeds, okay? Um, so with that being said, I think just a little bit of gasket sealer, all torqued or all tightened down in a crisscross pattern, we should be uh, well within specification of a senior. All right, let me get this apart. Let me get it all cleaned up, uh, or final cleaned up, and uh, we'll... We'll start putting it back together. The first side cover is installed. You can see there's just a little bit of squish, a sealer coming out. I did set the bolts to 20 foot pounds in a crisscross pattern. I couldn't find a torque spec for it, so 20 foot pounds is probably more than sufficient. But then, of course, I put down here on the bottom. Thankfully, it's on the bottom. I put my hand in the sealer, so I had to kind of wipe it up. I'm going to let that cure. And then I'll just take a razor blade and cut the squeeze out off. So that'll be perfectly acceptable in my opinion. I've already cleaned the surface here with brake cleaner. I've cleaned the surface with brake cleaner. So that's all set. I'm going to go ahead and pre-grease. Put a little bit of grease on this bearing to lube it up. I'm going to grease the uh, race. I've already squirted oil into that bearing right there. So that's all pre-lubed. Oh, I'll, I'll put oil uh, on this particular bearing when I put the uh, drive shaft tube back on. I'm going to cover that up so dirt can't get to it. So I'm going to go ahead and set the camera up. We'll do a time lapse. It's going to be a little bit of time, meaning, you know, even, even with it sped up, it's going to take me some time to get all of this back together. All right, let's get to it.
and there it is all set and ready for action I'm really happy with the way it came out I'm presently surprised at myself that I was able to do it and have the what I believe the level of success that I was hoping for overall everything's good that little bit of squeeze out on the sealer I'll just wait till that fully cures and then just take a sharp razor knife and cut that off so you'll just see a clean little rudy metal primer sort of color uh, the Durco sealer is perfect for that kind of for this kind of stuff when it comes to the coloring um, I'll, oh, uh, spinning wise, beautiful. I mean, this thing spins so smooth and you can just hear, there's just a little bit of play. Um, so real happy about that. The actual spin real nice. Everything goes. If I turn it, actually I need two hands, um, cause it's an open differential, but you know, everything mint, everything spins real nice and smooth. So, super stoked, super stoked about that. Keep in mind, it's just got grease in it. I don't even have oil in there. So, I'm right there, right, right there. One of the other things I did is I went over to the local hardware, the old school hardware store near my house, and I got these uh, plugs that are sort of original. Uh, these are hex head, you know, Allen key style. The originals just had squares in there, um, but better than the big stupid looking Home Depot plugs so I got one there and I got one there um, when I fill that up with oil I'll go ahead and tighten those down I'm actually gonna go get a couple new lower uh, eighth inch pipe but I want black iron I don't want brass or galvanized and um, when I had gotten these I, this was a while ago I should have gotten I didn't even think about getting those plugs so I'll go get those today put those in That'll be all set. So right now, I'm going to let this cure for about 24 hours. And I'm going to be honest with you. I'm going to put a bag over the top of it to keep it clean. And we will be, I'll have to mount it to the frame before we put the gear cases back together. So more coming on the senior. This is going to be the project for right now because I really want to get this thing back together. All right, guys, thank you very much for watching. Uh, if you could please like, share, and subscribe. And as always, please leave a comment below and give the, the uh, video a thumbs up. So that way it gets noticed. And you help me out too, and I really appreciate that. All right, guys, thank you very much for watching. Uh, to, I don't know what's going to be next on the senior. I'm leaning maybe to the transmission. I, I don't know. But... More senior content coming up, so if you're looking forward to that, please like, share, subscribe, and I will we'll meet up again on the next project. Have a great day.